Good Monday, everyone, and thank you for joining me today on our, uh, our third installment of our virtual potluck leadership and coaching series. And uh, I am amped up. I am stoked because uh, one of the greatest wingmen I've ever had is about to join us. Now, uh, many of you know I played professional football, all that kind of stuff, yada, 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 yada. But the most successful team I was a part of was actually a channel and URO team. And um, uh, our guest today walked into the studio and did her bit of her demo, and she she changed the entire dynamic of the team in a millisecond. And I'm so excited to chat with her. And that, of course, is Alyssa Lansdell. Oh, Ken, you what never is up, E? Ago. That's so sweet. Thank you. I can go back in time, and there there are indelible moments. And you came in, and you had this Toronto cool vibe when you came in to Kim Way. Remember the studio? Yeah, it was the size of a living studio. room. The studio, yeah. And you did your thing, and they kept doing take after take after take. And we're all sitting there going, for God's sake, give her the gig. She, I swear she opened her mouth and she could speak English. We were going to hire her. We all knew it. <laughs> She's got a pulse. Just hire her, for God's sake. Time has oh. flown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time has flown. Alyssa Lansdale, Rockstar. Really 20 years, right? Yeah, and Rockstar Communications. Tell me about it. Yeah, it, it's Communications is the result, I guess, of, no, I don't just guess, I know, of yeah. decades of, and, and I mean that literally, of communications experience. So that's, as you know, in front of the camera, yeah. also behind the camera as a writer, and then moving into the second phase of my career, which was communications work, helping people lead mm -hmm. every time they speak. Um, helping people to present in a way that commands attention. So working both sides of that, it, it was kind of inevitable that I would I would come up with with rock star, which I think encapsulates what I'm trying to say, which is that we all have that rock star within us. We all have yes. that potential, and it's it's really just about bringing that out, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't serve us to reveal the inner rock star. And it kind of reminds me of a bit of a shift in how people see themselves because we'd always look at people who are successful maybe 15 years ago and say, wow, they were just born to be successful. That would never be me. Right. And the thought was they were extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. But in fact, with some coaching and with some, some knowledge, you can turn what, what you, maybe you commit yourself that you're an ordinary person to an extraordinary person doing something that you really enjoy doing. Absolutely. It's really yeah. about tapping into your authenticity, of course. But anybody oh. that we think was born with it, guess what? Yeah, yeah, they were born with, with a certain je ne sais quoi, but yeah. they've had to work at it. So if you look at the Obamas out there, the Bill Clintons, the, you know, any other mm -hmm. leader you like to follow, they weren't always like that, right? They, right. They, sure. just, yeah. you know, they had a team around them. They had people who would tell them the truth about what worked and what didn't work. And they mm -hmm. were committed. It's dedication, really, more than anything. Is there also a leap of faith uh, where you, you tell yourself, no more doubt, no more be my own worst enemy? Um, because oftentimes, for instance, in our industry, when we're back and doing our TV thing, uh, a lot of people were doing impersonations of other people who were successful. There's a funny story about the Major League Baseball guy in Japan doing play-by-play, -play, and they're saying, this guy's the Hall of Famer. He's the Vin Scully, the guy the voice of the LA Dodgers. Said, this guy is the Vin Scully of, <laughs> the, the, of, of baseball in Asia. And mm -hmm. all he was doing was an impression, yeah. an Asian impression of Vin Scully. So finding your voice, taking that leap of faith, and, yes. and seeing where that takes you, trusting that navigation process is important. It's so important. You, you, you touch on so many important things here. One is to try, not to try to be somebody else. We can be inspired by other people. And I always tell people YouTube is the best place to go to yeah. find someone who inspires you. I had one client who said, I'm a little smiley guy. I don't have the gravitas. So that was his little uh, mm -hmm. crow on his shoulder speaking to him and saying, you can't do it. You're little, you're smiley. Nobody will take you seriously. I said, okay, so you tell me, do you know of any other little smiley guys out there that are great leaders? And without even hesitating, he said, easy, pinball Clemens. And I said, aha, there you go. Ah. Here's your inspiration. You don't, you don't want to be him necessarily, yeah. but, they, but draw from that and also quiet that voice at the other end of things. You can't take that leap of faith until you quiet the crow. I like to call it the crow. I didn't coin that phrase, but the whole idea is when you have the voice that says you can't, mm -hmm. you need to counter that with a voice and you can, use the voice of a partner or you know a parent or a mentor what would they say about you to counteract that they'd say of course you can how yes. did you how did you navigate the journey then when you left ottawa yeah and back to toronto a bigger market competitive market yeah. uh 
how are you able to say, okay, I'm good enough to work here. And then also when you didn't get the, maybe the gig you wanted, that it wasn't a baby in the bathwater scenario where, oh my God, I, I maybe I'm just not good enough. You know, you know how people do that? They go from one extreme to the next. It's how true. did you avoid that, those traps? Well, you know, I, I, as you're saying this, I realized the thing that came into my mind was, you know, silly, foolish youth, right? Yeah. So in my youth, I <laughs> believed 100, we can learn from our youthful selves sometimes, which is, you know, I, I really believe that I, I was the best at what I did. And that meant that I would get the job that was right for me life experiences can tend to jade that over time. But at that time I was still in my twenties and I thought, yeah, I got a lot to offer. So it took me two or three months during which time that crow was talking and saying, you're not good enough for the you know biggest net, uh, biggest market in the country. Um, but uh, timing also played into it and in that country music television moved to Toronto from yeah. Calgary and they took a chance on me. I knew nothing of country music. So I had to, again, quiet that voice that said, right. you don't know anything about this and say, yeah, I can learn. I, and I did. The funny thing is you don't know anything about country music, but you, you're a storyteller. Instinctually, yeah. you're a storyteller mm -hmm. and um, you had an ability to, I would say massage a conversation, but get to something that was of value to the, the viewer. Cause you can ask the same old questions, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, here's Tim McGraw, Tim, exciting album right and he'd yeah. give you the same spiel every day it was like then i had to deal with nhl hockey players every day but there's intuitive and, and nuance to finding something that's that nobody else will find and it creates a trust and an authentic trust right away because that person goes okay they're going about this a little differently and i'm going to spend time wanting to answer this person's questions yes uh, yeah you have this gift of doing that and and it really it does come down to reaching hearts and minds i talk about yeah. this in my work all the time right it's not and and i got great advice from uh, my first boss at cmt who sat down and said i did one interview my first interview is with faith hill and yeah. it's in california oh, at the beverly hills hotel right and one of those little cottages terrifying yeah. right and so <laughs> i go in there and i asked about you know, the the album, which she loved. I remember leaving yeah. and hearing her say, that's the best one we did all day, that was awesome. I took it back, I handed in my tape mm -hmm. and my boss came in and he said, in, in all earnestness, that interview sucked. <laughs> really? <laughs> and the way he said it, I knew that he wanted me to do better. Yeah. He had my best interests at heart, he was a great leader. I mean, I would advise him to use different words if I were coaching him, but I said, sure. okay, tell me more, why, why, why? He said, nobody cares about the album, they care about uh, Tim, they mm -hmm. care about her relationship with him. They care about the kids. They care about the people. Yeah. So get to know the people. He goes, I don't even want to hear you use their last names. Mm -hmm. You are on a one-on-one -on -one basis with these people. And that yeah. was the kind of community that country music was. Yeah. Still is to some degree in Nashville. So I got to know everybody and yeah, I I learned what was important to them. What gets somebody leaning forward when they're talking to you? Ask them more about that and don't have a prepared list of questions. You can have it, but don't run your way down that which was reflective then later on in that chapter with cmt when you be doing the red carpet work mm -hmm. and they would recognize you you yeah. didn't have to initially chase to get them to come to you they would say okay even if their handlers would say there's a list let's get over there because yes. one we could trust her she's authentic mm -hmm. and she, she's not going to be a waste of time right yeah, that's it, 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 that's brand building right there, right? Yeah. And and I didn't know I was doing it. I wasn't doing it consciously. I was forging relationships with people. I cared mm -hmm. more about establishing a connection with someone than I did about getting the perfect ultimate soundbite. So yeah, eventually that pays off. I, I do remember uh, Shia LaBeouf coming to Toronto for TIP, and right. they wouldn't talk to anybody. But I was working for TIP, so okay. they were they were able to actually trust me because other people were going to ask things that weren't so kind of him. Mm -hmm. He'd been through a rough time, and they kind of knew it was nice that someone trusted me. Didn't ask for my, you know, what are, what what are you going to ask, and what are you, yeah, you know, they they knew that I was going to ask professional questions that that um, put him in the best possible light, right? Well, what I love about what you're doing now is one, the skill sets that you bring to the table, but your ability to present it. So I'm gonna ask Chris, uh, uh, our producer, uh, to play a YouTube video, an example of your work, because it's precise, it's concise, and it's informative and it's valuable. And I just love the way you do your thing on camera. So Chris, can you play that for us? Okay. 
how's the quarantine going? I've been seeing all kinds of images on social media featuring how people are spending their days and riding out their boredom right now. Everything from making memes to working out to dressing up their cat. All good things. Another good thing to do right now, build your brand. Now you might be thinking, that sounds pretty superficial at a time like this. Hey, maybe you always thought of that word brand as superficial or even artificial. So let's change the word to character. How would you define your character and how do you share this with others? I'm actually convinced that right now is the best time to work on your identity. A time when self-reflection is inevitable, when all that artifice of life is stripped away, leaving our essence in all its vulnerable glory. Now is the best possible time to define our character. So when did you last take time to think about how the world sees you? Chances are you were working too hard to even consider such a thing. So here is your opportunity. And it's actually easier than you think. I have a quick exercise for you. I want you to take a piece of paper, divide it into two columns. At the top of the left column, write how others see me. At the top of the right column, write how I want others to see me. And if you're saying, huh, I don't know how others see me. Well, then that's telling, isn't it? This may be an indication that you need to communicate more often and or more effectively with others starting now. So if you don't know how others on your team at work or even at home see you, here's a crazy idea. Ask them. Reach out by phone, email, text, FaceTime and ask, what are three words you would use to describe me? and then write those down. A list of five to 10 adjectives will do. Next, really dig deep in terms of deciding what to put in the second column. What are five to 10 words you would want people to use when describing you? Write those down. And then finally, compare the two columns. If they match up perfectly, then guess what? Your identity or brand is strong. If they're similar, for example, if people say you're easily influenced, but you want to be seen more as someone who takes people's opinions seriously, then you need to figure out a way to bridge that gap. If the two columns read completely differently, then write down three solid things you can do to make sure that left column, how others see you, aligns more with what's in the right column, how you want to be seen. Do that and you will be on your way to having the character of a rock star. All right, so that's an example of your work, Alyssa Lansdell. I love it. I love your presence. I love your the, the personality, the character that, that you. you are. And, and oh, you used the word character. You were watching. You were paying attention. Well, because I see you do these little things. Uh, and I've watched all your videos, and, and now you're creating them. It, it takes time to create that, that hub of videos. But uh, I watch you. I say, you know what? She's been there and done that with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand out the window. <laughs> And, and, and in, in some ways, this is your right place and your right time that this just fits you. I love it. It does. No. And and for the first time, I feel like I'm I'm doing what I'm passionate about 100 percent without mm. any of the other stuff. Um, I've always done what I'm passionate about. But you know what I mean? There's yeah. usually like I got to take care of this and I got to do this administrative thing. And I still do. But this is 100 percent driven by me. So I love and I say driven by me, but driven by the experiences I've had with people knowing what people want to hear, what they yeah. need to know, and tying it up with a bow. As you say, at some point, all of that knowledge and all of that experience kind of comes together. And yeah, it's it's one of those moments. Let's put your comms hat on then. We're in a critical yeah. stage right now, a critical chapter with this global mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah. Um, leaders are living under the microscope. We're seeing some great leaders do some great work. Some leaders that we didn't expect to do great work, who've, who've pleasantly surprised us, and some who, uh, as expected, have been complete train wrecks. We don't have to name any of them, but we know <laughs> who we're talking about. But from a calm standpoint and messaging and all that, mm -hmm. what, can you, what can you give people today to help them navigate the day-to-day? -day? Because this is, this is a new normal, right. and it's a very, uh, it's just a challenging normal right now. And I'm finding people are, reaching a bit of a breaking point. How do you get them to avoid that and keep them in a same safe place? Yeah, well, I believe that really acknowledging what we're all going through and yeah. 
acknowledging what's human about us because this is it's an extraordinary time yeah we can talk about it all the ways and that it's a terrible time it's a tragic time it's a um <laughs> apocalyptic time but yeah. at the same time it's extraordinary in some wonderful ways we're learning what makes us the same we mm -hmm. you know all of a sudden that we're leveling the playing field so what are we learning from our leaders good and bad we're learning that we need to be authentic we mm -hmm. need to say when we're scared we, we need to not put on a face or uh, shill a bunch of lies. We need to say, you know what? I'm not sure where this is going, but here's what I do know. And then we need to be able to reach inside and decide what's important to us. What is my conviction? Mm -hmm. So often people deal in information. And if you think of, you know, how the world, how the world used to work, I suppose it still does <laughs> to some degree, right? But just the, the sheer amount of information that's being blown back and forth in emails and phone calls and so much of it is noise and you know i really believe that the key to this is going to be to dig down dig deep down and say okay so but what do we believe about this and that will determine our course you know what where do we need to be that's another uh, piece of it not just the conviction piece but also having a vision and that vision might now be different for a lot of people as it is for our leaders, right? Yeah. Um, but they're but they're working within that. So we look at Justin Trudeau and we look at Mr. Ford, and mm -hmm. we see two people with completely different political views yeah. who have put the same thing first. They're both on Team Canada. Yeah, you know, Team Team Canada, Team Ontario, whatever the case may be. But it really is about the people. And by the way, Ken, we know you now. You can't fake it. You really can, don't believe in uh, about something people will know yeah i i think i think of when when someone's selling if they sell you something and you leave the lot with the lemon yes and you get home you go oh man why did i not see that person was a salesman but if you stand beside that person watch them work for two or three days you go that's someone i just don't want to be around and i think we're seeing that that certain leaders in south of the border um uh, we've seen his cards Mm -hmm. we, had, we were, we were, people were, people globally were hopeful that he would change, uh, but he, he just didn't. And well, what he's selling in terms of an authenticity is an authentic lie that still, for some reason, people still believe. They do. And yet, I mean, gosh, I, I always joke that I could teach a whole course on what he's doing as a leader that's... Mm -hmm. um, effective i'm not yeah. saying right <laughs> uh, yeah. but he's shown us who he is hasn't he he's been on brand completely all of this time there will be a plenty of case studies regarding donald trump i'm sure oh yeah absolutely uh but you know maya angelou told us that there's another famous quote i love mm -hmm. to quote her but one of my favorite of hers is when someone shows you who they are believe yeah. them the first time and uh so he yeah. did and so right now i mean today as we are speaking what's happening is he's sort of changed his play to it's important that America gets back to work. That's his yeah. message right now. And I'm seeing clips of people saying, I know that this pandemic is real, but it's important for me to get back to work, which is just, um, you know, what leader who cares about the people is going to suggest that during a global pandemic. And play Russian roulette with their health and not Absolutely. just their own health, but the health of others. Yes. Yes. Which is the real criminal act. It is criminal, and I, I like that you've described it as such. And history will, you know, make these these contrasts very sharp, and it will show us who everybody was. So it's, and I, I keep trying to think of a better ex, uh, expression than separates the men from the boys because mm -hmm. of how sexist that is. But yeah. <laughs> whatever the equivalent of that is, it separates yeah. those who care from those who don't, and those who care are going to succeed. That's the whole thing. You don't have to have every answer as a leader. You just need to care and you need to invest that care in people mm -hmm. and you will get it back tenfold. It's funny thing. What I've learned in my work over the last probably nine years is that whether you want to or not, you're going to wake up each day and consciously or subconsciously ask yourself one question. Am I in my right place in the right time? Mm -hmm. If you are, that means the suit you're wearing fits. Yeah. And then whatever comes during the day, could you have a great day, could have a horrible day, but at least you're in your right place and you can manage the stuff that's going on because you're in an authentic place. But if the suit doesn't fit and now you're, you're just being a warrior for the sake of a warrior and surviving versus an authentic warrior where, you know what, you have an ethos, a purpose mm -hmm. and, and a, a sense of direction. And yes. well, so much about you reminds me of that. You're almost like this energetic Navy SEAL without the weaponry. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, don't put a weapon in my hand. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's true. I have a direction. I'm. I love that you say that because when I first started doing the corporate communications work, mm. I remember saying to the woman I worked for, "Look, I love this work. I believe in it, but I haven't worn it yet." <laughs> so yeah. it's funny that we're both using that same analogy. It's like I said, I gotta I gotta break it in. I gotta make it my own. Yeah. Um, and so I remember thinking that because it, I felt actually really restricted in the, in the, the, I called it the monkey suit, you know, the corporate suit. And so I started playing with even that, even physically what I wore, um, because I had to feel comfortable. I had to feel like what I was saying was mine. And that's really, as you say, that's ultimate freedom, isn't it? Where you kind of think I'm not just speaking the company line. I'm not mm -hmm. towing the company line. Yeah. I'm actually speaking my own truth. And, and hey, that's, and, and the company I work for, and now the company that I own, um, is in alignment with that. You're yeah. not fighting against anything anymore. You will have your disagreements for sure with people. Um, and it's really how you, you handle that and what vision you have. What, as you say, what direction you're going in that, that helps you solve those. The, the great thing too, I, I, I get from you and, and, and is that it's a gift that you're giving people. Thank you. Um, it's, it's genuine. And um, you love, I think you love the authentic, you can't be that personality without being authentic. You can be the personality for a little bit and get away with it, but eventually, you know, your colors are gonna show. Right. Uh, but the person yeah. I'm talking to today is the same Alyssa Lansdell I met in that studio when you came in and just changed, again, changed the dynamic because we needed that, we needed that, that energy. And, energy and yeah we, yeah that's presence right that's what yeah. i because i teach presence and i try to mm -hmm. quantify that as well but really your presence is your authentic energy and yeah it, how, how nice to have been in a place that let me do that and let you do that yeah and, and, a, and a bunch of young we were all young guns trying to figure out our way up against the big competitive monster that was cjoh and ctv and max keeping all that crew and um they always wondered i had conversations with people from ctv in the past and they said you know what was it like i said it was a blast. It, I wouldn't it, trade that experience for the world. Yeah, it really was. And because again, you remember the people, you remember mm -hmm. the stories, you don't necessarily, you know, remember, it doesn't have anything to do with structure or, <laughs> or yeah, politics yeah. or anything like that. It really was a relationship between people, which is what I finally in my old age have come around to realizing is important in life, right? It's, it's, the funny thing is, is when people say, tell me what your CFL career, Ken, I mean, what do you remember? I remember the people. I don't remember one score of a game. But I can tell you about Lonzal Hill or Wally Zatilli or Richard Nurse or whoever it's going to be. Yeah. And their stories um, that occurred, you know, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. But they feel like they occurred yesterday. Aha. Uh -huh. I know exactly what you mean. And yeah. I have so many memories from the new RO days. Same thing. Yeah. And ratings were important for us. But yeah. we were having so much fun that we knew, if anything, uh, Mike Edgel and Colin Trithui and Cindy Edwards and Rob Maxwell and Sandra Blakey and everything, Carolyn Redekow, all yeah. the crew. Uh, we just loved being around each other. It's true. Remember, we used to do like the 6 and 11 news and then yeah. we would go out to a watering hole and yeah. have some beers until the wee well, hour. Remember, we'd go to Don, we go to, uh, not Don Cherry's, it was Local Heroes. Local Heroes. The arcade oh, games right around the corner. I was trying and to remember that the other day. Eat bad food and we'd have cocktails <laughs> and, and just laugh. <laughs> And the funny thing is, uh, we were at that time, as you know, we were right beside CTV, and yeah. we never saw any CTV people going in to no, have something to eat afterwards. It no, was up with us, the crew. It's true, and I got—I mean, I'm—I'm I, I'm nostalgic for those times because yeah. oh, I didn't have children, I didn't have to worry about my waist. So many things, <laughs> so many things. But yeah, those were very special times, absolutely. So Rockstar Communications, outstanding. You have your YouTube channel. You're building that content there. Yes. Uh, beyond that, I know you can't really look too far forward because of this global pandemic we're in, but when we connect a year from now and do this, what do you hope to have accomplished? Uh, I, I, I really hope to have made some inroads in terms of helping people make virtual communication as personal as possible. Yeah. Because that's where we're going. We knew we were going there. We just didn't. We Now we're like yeah. full steam ahead, you know, a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. So my hope is that a year from now, we 
we have found ways, methods to be able to really connect with people when we're not in the room with them. I think we're doing that personally. I don't know about mm. you. I've had a few virtual cocktail hours and, you know, I'm starting to realize the, the benefits of this virtual communication and that there's this whole, it's like parts, parts of our brain we haven't used before. You know, yeah. there, there's a whole bunch of uh, untapped uh, potential there. So I look forward to doing that. I, I want to just bring this to as many people as possible. That's mm. what I love about what's driving me is really my passion for this right now. Where it goes, who knows? I've had some interest from the corporate side of things, but I would love to help people. Listen, the other day I had a friend call me and she was on the phone with me for two hours. She wanted to know how to navigate virtual dating. So who Mm. knows, Ken, you might be seeing me as a virtual dating coach with you you on your Zoom date. I I might be there as well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm hoping I can be doing some work with Algonquin College. If that pans out, I'm, I'm absolutely going to chat with them about connecting you and connecting the dots. That would be amazing. Uh, See, that's uh, what I mean. Now we're not worried about, because before it was, Oh, could I work with people in Ottawa? That's a bit of a gosh, it's been a while since I've doesn't matter anymore. Right now. I I feel closer to my, my people in Ottawa than ever before. So that would be wonderful. And thanks to technology. And one of your videos is about three easy steps to get yourself comfortable doing technology. And something as nuanced as the level of your camera. Yeah. Simple things, your audio, right? whatever it is, simple things that make you comfortable. And then don't go on trying to be, you know, Walter Cronkite or someone you're not. Just be the person you are and you'll be okay. Absolutely. And be able to laugh at yourself. I think that's that's something. Well, you know me, Ken. <laughs> uh, uh, entertainment, weather, and sports guys have always been personalities. Yeah, it's true, right? Every night we did our thing, it was open mic night. And they it paid us a- and they paid us for it. I know. The news anchors were like, dang it. I really want to be able to do that. Too much fun. (laughs) Those two. Well, thank you so much for making time. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. And uh, of course, uh, we will reconnect. I'm going to connect with Leanne, Leanne Lang, uh, in a week from now. I am looking forward to seeing that. And chat with her as well. So uh, best of luck in everything you've got going on. And uh, I'm going to keep watching you and keep cheering you on. I'm I'm a big fan, obviously. And uh, thank you. uh, you. For those people who come across you on your journey, your path, they're going to be quite fortunate. Ah, uh, you're the best, Ken. Thank you. All right. Much love, Alyssa Lansdell. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Me. All right. So again, um, so this week we have Joanne Pollock's going to join us, the former GM of the Auto Rough Riders, the first female GM of a professional football team. We also have Jessica Tronich. She's an Elevate Spin owner, a business owner, but she's also the two Ironmans, and she's climbed a bunch of mountains as well. And as mentioned, we also have Leanne Lang next week. Uh, my former other wingman from my TV days, who's doing some great work as well. So uh, thank you for joining us on this segment, uh, this uh, episode of our virtual potluck luncheon, and we will chat real soon. Stay safe and stay well. 